I'm Alicia Mikolajczyk Kurtz, and this is Real Talk, a place where doctors and other healthcare professionals share stories about their real human experiences working in medicine. On today's episode, we'll hear a story from Julie Watkins' story, an emergency physician with Vituity. Julie's story was recorded at a live Real Talk session in Santa Clara, California. Doctors are scientists. We spend four years of college and then four years of medical school and then anywhere from three to seven more years of residency and fellowship training, mastering the chemistry, physiology, and pathology of the human body. Learning the most data-supported, evidence-based approach to caring for our patients. But when the rubber meets the road and you're standing there at the patient's bedside, trying to convince them or their family what should happen next, or you're making split decisions in the operating room, or trying to convince a colleague that this patient needs their help now and not in the morning, or when you're finding the courage to trust your gut, when you can't really explain why you know your decision is the right one. In these moments, it's often not the textbook medicine that guides us. It's something else. It's this relentless, ferocious, devoted animal inside us that brings the passion, drive, and dedication we have to our work. It's the part of us, scientifically based or not, that believes in miracles and the power of hope and prayer and positive energy. Plenty of people who work in medicine are smart. They seriously have to be to pass the ridiculous number of long, expensive tests that we all take and to endure these grueling years and years of training. There's nobody who doubts that by the time you're a doctor or a nurse practitioner or a PA, etc., you are smart. Really smart. But the providers that patients remember, the ones we all looked up to in our earliest days of training, wanting to be like them, Those people have and regularly tap into this inner beast, this mama bear brain. A mama bear that will be honest and frank while simultaneously compassionate and devoted. That will balance the dryness of logic and education with street smarts and practical approaches. That will tell you what you need to hear, even when it's hard to be the one to tell you. And that won't ever give up and won't ever back down without fighting for you to the death. But then, when death comes, they will hold you in their arms and grieve your passing. They will make sure you are never forgotten, that your memory and spirit live on. And they will use your life as an inspiration and motivation for their own. Because a mother's love is eternal. This is Julie's story. In June, uh, June 26, 2018, our hearts and our minds were expanded when we welcomed a beautiful, healthy baby into our family. The next four months were phenomenal. We had an amazing maternity leave. We were just really enjoying getting to know this new little person in our lives. This is Halloween. Uh, He was a chicken for Halloween. (laughs) We were more amused than he was. The following day, November 1st, seemed like any other day, but would turn out to be something altogether different. It was 3 p.m., I was finishing my shift, and I saw that I had a phone call from my husband. So I picked it up, and he said, in this terrified, trembling voice, Julie, when I went to get Tygo up from his nap, he wouldn't wake up. And he was unresponsive, and he was limp, and he was gray. So I, I freaked out, and I put him on the bed, and I started CPR, and I called 911. And then the 911 caller told me to put him on the ground and to unzip his onesie 
and to put my two thumbs on his chest and to give him compressions and to breathe into his mouth. And then the paramedics arrived, and they're here now doing CPR. He said, please come, please come. The paramedic took the phone to give me a clinical update. He confirmed what Arash had said and told me that he had regained pulses. And I asked two questions. Is he moving? And is he crying? No. At that moment, my psyche split into two very distinct brains. On the one side, I had my doctor brain, based in evidence-based medicine, science, rationality, and had this basis of eight years of clinical practice and gestalt. My other brain was my mama bear brain. So described this way because of its potential for ferocity. And my mama bear brain was fueled by optimism and believed in the power, the curative power of love and in the possibility of miracles. And from that moment on, every piece of information I took in was seen through these very distinct filters and perspectives. And at that point in time, my doctor, my doctor brain assessed the situation as this. Our baby has had an unpreventable, unexplained apneic event during his nap that resulted in cardiorespiratory arrest and likely severe brain injury that may not be survivable. But my mama bear brain saw things differently. Look at that guy. <laughs> Look at my little baby. Look at that sweet little baby. He is well loved. He is well nourished. He is wanted. He has a phenomenal medical team. My little guy is going to be just fine. My baby, my baby is going to be just fine. Over the next six days in the pediatric intensive care unit, there was no good news. And my doctor brain was resolved to the fact that Tygo probably wasn't going to wake up. My mama bear brain had different thoughts. And the tension between these two really grew as, as the situation seemed more dire. Doctor brain, are you a pediatrician? No. Okay. Are you fellowship trained in pediatric emergency medicine? No. Did you complete a PICU rotation during residency? No, during med school. Okay, okay. And have you seen this exact case from beginning to end in your eight years of practice? No. Then what do you know? What do you know? Who the hell are you? You're not an expert in this. You don't know. Maybe babies like Tiger wake up. Like, you don't know if Tiger's not going to wake up. You don't know. Confidence shaken, my doctor brain recoiled. I mean, you're right. I'm, I'm not an expert in this. And you're right, I've never seen this exact case from beginning to end. Maybe babies like Tygo do wake up. Maybe Tygo could wake up. Unfortunately, all the passion in the world um, does not cure an oxic brain injury. And so, though my mama bear brain won that battle, um, you might say that Tygo's story comes to an end on a Tuesday, November 7th, in the arms of his mama and papa, surrounded by family and infinite love. Uh, 
Um, loving and losing Taigo has affected me in three main ways as a provider. First, you may be able to tell, I'm intimately familiar with grief now. Um, I have found that grief is profound, it is debilitating and devastating, it is unrelenting and enduring. I have also found that with help, with therapy, with resources, with support groups, with love and support from your family and friends and community, that grief is endurable and it is survivable. I have also seen that grief without help, without therapy, without support groups and resources or loving supportive family results in addiction, suicide, divorce, and loss of relationships. I and we can do better to support our bereaved patients and the bereaved loved ones of our lost patients. The second way in which I've been affected as a provider is this new recognition of my mama bear brain. In hindsight, my mama bear brain was there all along. My mama bear brain, again, that fueled on optimism, believing in the curative power of love, my mama bear brain is the reason about a year ago I coded a 13-year-old who was in cardiac arrest, likely from sepsis. I coded her for an hour, even going to the point of giving her antibiotics while I'm coding her, because I was incredulous that she was going to die that day and that her mom was going home alone. My mama bear brain is the reason I insisted that my patient's son, who was on the phone, tell him himself that he loved him and he would see him after surgery. My patient that was dying of aortic dissection. I needed him to have the will to live that was stronger than the power of his actively dissecting aorta. And I knew the only thing that would give him that will to live is the love of his son and the desire to see him again. He did really well, by the way. <laughs> he did. That was a positive outcome. Um, Mama Bear Brain is the reason one of our colleagues down in Southern California coded a postpartum patient over and over and over again throughout her night shift, unwilling to let that patient die on the day of her child's birth. I have learned that my mama bear brain, as the antithesis to cynicism and burnout, is a gift to both myself and my patients. The third way in which I'm, I've been affected as a provider is actually spiritually. My family and I, we had a spiritual experience during those six days in the pediatric intensive care unit and after Tygo passed. And we believe that his spirit or essence persists in the absence of his body that is no longer alive. And so for the first time, I find myself contemplating the spirits of my patients. A couple of shifts after coming back to work after Tygo passed, I had a patient who died of cardiac arrest. And in the resuscitation bay, after he had passed, after we had called the code, I found myself talking to Tygo in my brain, talking to Tygo's spirit. Saying, look, little buddy, I don't know what you're up to these days. I don't know what you do. I don't know what you're able to do, what's on your agenda. But if possible, if you could, welcome this seemingly very nice gentleman who's newly in spirit form. I imagine he'd be really grateful to have a warm, loving welcome from a little guy like yourself. Before that fateful phone call, before those six days in the PICU, and before my baby's body was ashes in a box, what my patients saw was what they got. Today, I approach every patient encounter proudly with my doctor brain and my mama bear brain, and with the beautiful loving spirit of my sweet baby Tygo. Thank you for allowing me to share my story with you.
Like Julie, we've all lost people we love, whether it's a patient, a family member, or a friend. And we've all had moments where our inner mama bear brain gave us the ability to make mountains move or to mean it when we said, we're so sorry. We really did everything we could. Think about a time when your mama bear brain kicked in and helped you do something you couldn't normally have done. How do you carry the spirits of your past with you after they die? Your patients, your loved ones. How do those memories, those spirits, influence your work as a provider? A gigantic bear hug sized thank you to Julie Watkins Story for her bravery and for sharing her story with us. And thank you to the team at Vituity for their support of this podcast, to Marco Gonzalez, our sound engineer, and to all of you for listening. I'm Alicia, and this is Real Talk. Real Talk.